What's up, everybody? No, that was terrible. That was terrible. What's up? What's up? What's up? How does he do it? I don't. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it. Let's find. Let's find out together, hey? Let's go to YouTube. Peter McKinnon. What's up? What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another. What's up, everybody? No, that's not it. That's not it. What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back. Let's go and exhale, let's go and inhale and say What's up? Alright, that was it What's up everybody, Beepop Back with another video and welcome back to another video, I just said that. Continuing with the trend, professionally unprofessional. Woo! So today I thought I'd start a, a three part series. Kind of. Yeah, a three part series. One, how do I film my videos? Two, how do I edit my videos? Three, how do I edit my photos? If you follow me on Instagram, link in the description. No, it's not. My username's in the description because let's be real you click on a link takes you to the website you're not signed in as you are so you just can't be bothered signing in just to subscribe or follow someone so you know just check out my username that's floating on screen right now just vpop is here and that's that's that so uh if you check my instagram you will notice that my photos have been highly edited I could, you one could say one could say now granted i think that they are still quite appealing photos now my editing style is very unique I wouldn't say unique actually, I just say it's a very noticeable, yeah. you know that my photos have been edited when you see them because people who like subtle natural edits, I just, I understand why, like they look good, you're just trying to enhance the photo a little bit, but that's not what I go for, I go more for, uh, hey, this is my photo, this is how I took it, this is the before and after, you can clearly tell that they've been edited um i'm going for i go for more of a brandon brandon this guy his photos are amazing go check him out on instagram that's cool peter mckinnon check peter mckinnon out on instagram they are a great inspiration for me and uh speaking of peter mckinnon and his intro that i've been stealing for the last couple of videos uh today is actually quite you know focused because lots of these tricks and tips i have learned by watching peter mckinnon so I guess I'm just passing them on or showing you how I've incorporated them into my editing woes. Editing woes? Editing ways. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, like usual, set a timer. Now because I'm editing, I think it's going to take a little longer than 10 minutes. So hopefully we can keep this one under 15 minutes. So set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes of counting. Okay, we're counting down. So let's get started. <laughs> so for those who know me, which is probably all of you, since you know you are my friends and or family that watch me but for those who don't uh, I don't use a traditional computer I instead use an iPad Pro along with the Apple Pencil because think different I guess I just prefer to use the iPad it's what I've used ever since I was being growing up I've never owned a traditional computer it's always just been an iPad started with the iPad 2 then I went to the iPad uh, 5 I think. Now I'm at the latest generation 2018 iPad Pro with the USB-C. So I use two apps to edit my photos. I use Affinity Photo and Adobe Lightroom. So today we are going to be editing a few photos. I talk with uh, my friend Monty Hutchinson. Her Instagram is right here so go check her out. Give her a follow. Not that she needs it but whatever. Let's go into one that I haven't started editing and as you can see here this photo it's it's very dark. Now when I take my photos, I prefer to underexpose the photo because I feel like it's a lot easier to bring up the highlights and bring up the shadows and bring up the brightness out of a photo than it is to reduce the highlights and the clipping of a photo and that's just how I work. So you can see this photo is heavily, heavily underexposed. Like so much what you're thinking, I doubt that even editing can save this well it's real simple what i do is what i do is i make a duplicate of this photo i go to uh i don't i think they're called it's called are they masks i think they're called masks no they're called um i go to this little section here as you can see on the screen now and what i do is i go to screen the photo is already a lot brighter just by adding a duplicate layer and screening it so i'm gonna just merge that down so we have the one layer and this is where i would go in with my in painting brush and get rid of any blemishes that the subject may have but my friend is actually she's got quite a clear face she 
very, very clear faced. <laughs> I don't want to say attractive because that's just weird. Hey Monty, I know you're watching this. So now that we've made a duplicate and screened the photo so it's a lot brighter, we can actually jump into making this photo ready for Lightroom because I work in Affinity Photo to just prep the photo for Lightroom. Sometimes if I feel like it, it is all done in Affinity, but sometimes I just like to drop into Lightroom and just finish it off and make it that little bit nicer for Instagram but for the most part everything's done in Affinity Photo so that's cool let's right, double check your face you gonna have any blemishes yeah you're fine you're fine you're pretty enough while I'm on this first layer I am going to grab my studio retouch brushes here and I'm gonna go to teeth whitener now this is something you shouldn't be doing too much using the apple pencil to color in over her teeth to make them just a little bit wider i do this with every photo especially mine because my teeth are very yellow in photos and uh, they didn't look too bad <laughs> depending on when this video is out the link to um the vlog i did with monty is up in the icard if this video goes up before the vlog then i guess that's too bad now I go and do all my brightness levels and make sure that all the levels are bright and the shadows are lifted a little bit and there's contrast because I like the dynamic range in between my in my photos and videos so let's just add a brightness contrast adjustment. Depending on how well exposed the photo is I always lower the brightness by about 20% but because this image was very underexposed before we're going to increase the brightness by about 30%, contrast up by 25, slide that opacity to see the difference, and I'm liking that so far. So it's a bit more of a brighter, more contrasty photo, but yeah, I'm happy at 25% contrast, and now we're going to go lift the highlights and shadows, so I add a highlight shadow adjustment, and just saying right now, all of this is being done on an iPad, so suck on that everyone at school who didn't think an iPad could replace a computer. So depending on what kind of mood I'm going for, depends if I lift the shadows or I increase the shadows. If I'm going for a dramatic portrait, we're going to go and reduce the shadows and bring out a lot of the darkness. But because I'm not going for that, it's more of a lighthearted, happier kind of vibe. We're gonna increase the shadows or lift the shadows and shh, we're gonna be lifting the shadows so they're not as dark in places. And we're gonna also be increasing the highlights. So. Now lots of people don't like the style of editing I do because yes I will admit sometimes I do go a little overboard and sometimes you just need to take a step back away from what you're doing and go yeah that that really sucks I'm gonna start again I do that often and you know it's just a lot of trial and error a lot of practice and now exposure 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 we're gonna just lift the exposure a tiny bit brightening up the image one more time now here's something I learned by Peter McKinnon is if you duplicate this image and just go and create a soft light overlay, drag that to 50%, make sure this layer is selected, and then add a Gaussian, 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 Gaussian blur, and lift that Gaussian blur. You can really soften up all of the features in this photo. Now you're probably wondering why would you ever want to do that? I mean, for one, it is a softer image and it's a bit more appealing to the eye. But if I was to go and add another layer, make this an overlay layer, go into my sharpening tools, go to high pass filter, turn on monochrome because we're just adjusting the black and white. You can actually see that I can sharpen up the image just by doing this. And I think that's really cool. That's another editing trick you can do with layers. So yeah, I think that's a bright enough image. And if we'll just drag this um, timeline all the way to back, you can see all the difference that this has made already to the image. So now let's go into our color adjustments. So I like to normally just group all of these. So just, just so my layers are looking a little neater. Now I'm going to go into my color balance. I just play around with sliders a lot. Like I normally go for a cooler tone to my photos, but that's just me. And again, my editing style is very unique compared to a lot of other people. So let's lift the blues up a bit. And now we're jumping into our HSL tab and we're just going to boost the saturation a little bit and anything that seems to be clipping here we just drag back so for instance her face now has become really really red so we'll just bring that back by 10% 
and darken it up a bit or lighten it up. One of the two, depending on what the photo is of, depends if I make the luminance higher, which will smooth out a lot of the facial features and tone down the saturation in the color. So I think that's really nice. And again, we're gonna be going over time up, but like I, said, like I said, we're editing today, so. And um, I think uh, that's about it for Affinity Photo. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. And now the last thing I always do is add a LUT. So I load up Peter McKinnon's LUT. I have my own LUT, which I do have here, but I do love Peter McKinnon's LUT, so and that's what I normally use. Clean and tidy is my go-to lot because it's just a clean and tidy lot. As you can see here, it just makes it a little clean and tidy. I normally turn the opacity down to 75%. We can move this all the way up to the top so it's affecting all the layers. And that right there just looks a lot cleaner to me. A few other things you can do in Affinity Photo with the layers is I can add a pixel layer. So let's go pixel layer, hit G, gradient. And I can create a gradient fill and change this to soft light. So we go from one angle to the next, and let's make this one say a bit of a darker orange. Turn the opacity down to under 50 ish percent, and you can see that just adds a little bit of pizzazz to the photo so that's something i also like to do in affinity photo cool so that's basically it for affinity photo um i would be happy to post this to instagram but i want to see what i can do in lightroom too so we're, we're going to export this to lightroom so now the photo is opened up in lightroom and it's really easy to do my one tap effects so if i was just to dive into Again, Peter McKinnon's full pack 2018. I swear I don't have a big man crush on McKinnon. He's a good photographer, okay? And I learn a lot. Look at all these different presets and see if any of them I like. So, so far, Dawn, Dusk, I've never really used either of them, but I'm sure I will find a day where I like to use them. And I'm, not, I'm liking Louise, it's just it's taking, making her jumper a little too, little too orange. So moving on to Moraine. That one's not too bad. It adds back in the shadow. See, what I was doing in Affinity Photo was just prepping it for Lightroom, and Lightroom kind of just finishes it off for Instagram. So far, I like how Moraine looks. Overload, nope, nope, six side. I'm gonna go with Moraine, Moraine here. So I'm gonna hit done and just dial back in those colors a little bit, just because the yellow on her face is just a little too much for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. So we're going to go export, share, maximum available, render out the photo. I'm going to go copy. I'm going to bring up my file zap. And I'm going to go chuck it in to a new folder. Monty's photos edited. And I'm just paste it in. I'm going to title that because I just title everything and it helps my OCD. Monty Hunter Rocks 1 because I have multiple shots like this. And that up just basically backs it up to iCloud in its full resolution. So I just have a copy of that. And basically that is how I edit my photos. Uh, stay tuned, I will be making a how do I make my videos filming and editing. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little insightful for you on how I edit my photos. Again, I'm not claiming to make these photos better. In some cases, I do make them worse, but it is just, it's still a learning thing for me. I'm still learning how to do this the best of my abilities. Maybe I'll take a five minute break, come back to this and go, what have I done to this photo? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I edit my photos using Affinity Photo and Adobe Lightroom. Leave a comment below with any tips, tricks you may have. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Hit that dislike button if you didn't enjoy it and you think my editing sucks. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because YouTube sucks. And uh, I think that's, that's it guys, that's about it. Oh. One more thing, have a good day, morning, night, don't know when you're watching this, and uh, bye.